What's up YouTube? My name is Marvin Aziz. I'm a freelance developer and today I want to show you how to build a custom pop-up using Webflow only. So if you don't want to send the user to the next page in order to see that content you've built, this is the right place. It works perfectly for newsletter sign-up forms, but also really any content you want to show to your user without redirecting them. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so um, this is the pop-up design I built in Figma. As you can tell, there's not too much going on, but I thought let's build a little contact form pop-up uh, for users to really quickly get in touch with the, with the website owner or the business behind it, right? So we have that big heading right here, small little paragraph down there, and that big 3D image I pulled from, from a Figma plugin. Um, also that little form. So if you're interested in learning how to design such a pop-up form within Figma or maybe the 3D design, let me know in the comments and I'll maybe make a video about it. So yeah, let's actually jump into the Webflow build. So I have chosen to go with a template this time. So um, this is a clonable website from Right Hemisphere Echo based in India. Um, they've built this really nice website we are going to build on. So feel free to check out the description below. There should be um, a link to exactly that template. And I this is the homepage and I have already built the foundation for the pop-up. Let's go through the structure right here. Um, we've got that pop-up wrapper to wrap everything inside that wrapper, right? And I um, give it a little padding on each side, made sure that it's full width and full height. And for now, I put it to relative, but in the end, we're going to put it to absolute and yeah, put it on top of everything else, basically. That's the form, it's just a basic basic uh, Webflow form. I gave it a bit of design details um, from the Figma file. And we've got that big hand, and what I actually like about that hand is that you can give it a really nice and easy interaction just hovering on it, right? So it goes in and out. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so what we need in order to start creating that um, pop-up, right? So we, we're going to need a button. And I thought, let's just use that button on the top right corner. So we've got that primary button and I would like to um, be able to click it in order for the pop-up to open, right? So um, let's prepare the pop-up first. I am going to set it to absolute. And now it's on top of everything else in the heading section, right? So the first 100 viewport height is filled with that pop-up now. And I am, for now, going to hide it, right? So uh, this is going to be display none. I still do have that pop-up wrapper selected and I'm going to the interaction section by pressing H or clicking on that little icon on the top and I want to create an element trigger. And actually we want that button selected, right? So we want um, to have the interaction on the button. The trigger is going to be um, a click. And on the first click, the menu should open. And I'm going to call that pop-up open. And I'm going to create a new action. And so I'm gonna choose the style opacity for now. And I don't want the button to change, but I want the pop-up wrapper. So I'm going to actually change the target to be the pop-up wrapper. And I'm going to use classes. Why classes? Because if I use classes now, it's going to be real easy to reuse that interaction on multiple sites, right? So if you only select the element, um, 
you have to redo that interaction on other sides if you want to reuse it. Okay, so let's keep it on, on the class. And I'm going to set this as an initial state, set the opacity to zero. I'm going to add another um, action. This time I want the um, initial state to be hidden of the pop-up, right? And I am going to actually select both of them and duplicate them so that I can change the opacity to 100 and show it as display flex. There it is. Okay. Now what we can do is actually um, move the opacity to be after the um, display change. So um, this has to be first, right? In order to um, for the opacity to actually work. And I want the, the opacity to have a nice ease. So I'm simply going to use ease for that. And also actually what I'd like to do in the first place is scale it in size, not in scale, but in size. So I would like the whole wrapper. I want to see it first. So I would like the whole wrapper to have a width of 0% and the height of 100 VH. And this is going to be the initial state. And I'm going to duplicate that as well to change it to a width of 100%. All right, so let's actually preview that. Okay, and you can tell that actually the elements within that wrapper are weirdly behaving, right? They're changing in size. So not really, not really nice, not really what we want, okay? So in order to fix that, um, we might actually have to change the structure. So I'm gonna head into the pop-up wrapper and I'd like to see it again. There we go. And what I would like to do now is, first of all, this wrapper right here, I don't want it to shrink or grow. Now let's see if it actually changes in size, if I change the width to something else. No, it doesn't, right? except for the hand, but the hand is actually, I think it's a nice effect if the hand grows with it and the rest doesn't. I'm not sure yet. Also, what I'd like to do is actually put it to overflow hidden. So if it changes in sizes, you can't see anything else. Back to 100 VH and I am going to put it back to display none and let's see if the interaction is working yeah okay i think that wasn't too bad yes okay this looks really nice what do you think i actually really like that Yes, I love that. Cool, okay. But now, as you can tell, um, we still need to configure that uh, closing animation, right? So the button here doesn't help. It's not configured yet. Um, so in order for that to work, um, we need to reopen that pop-up wrapper because I need to see the X right here, okay? So I'm going to add a new element trigger on mouse click. And I'm gonna start a new animation. 
and I'm simply going to duplicate the pop-up open and I'm going to call it pop-up close. I'm gonna delete the first couple of actions, the initial state, and I'm going to reorder the actions for it to work. Right? So actually size would go first, opacity second, hiding it last. Yeah, that makes sense. So size should go to 0%. And this should actually have an ease out. Opacity to 0%. And display none. Okay, let's again close it. Oops, wrong one. Close, obviously, the pop-up wrapper. And let's see if this is working. Opens, perfectly fine. Closes. But it's a bit abrupt, right? So something's weird. It's closing instantly. It's opening really nice, but it's closing instantly. Okay, let's check that. So we need to show it again and check the pop-up close animation. Let's give this a delay of, oh yeah, th that was it. Okay. So this is supposed to happen after everything is gone, right? Yeah. Okay, let's change it actually back to 0.6. I think it was 0.4 before or 0.5, but I want it to be 0.6. Delete that again and it should Should actually work, let's see. Kinda. Opacity is working. Size seems not to work. Why is that? Okay, let's duplicate it again. Put it as initial state. Give it a 100%. And let's see. Yeah, this is helping a lot. Okay, let's keep it like that. There's something I don't like about this. Oh yeah, it's stopping and then it disappears. Can you tell? Yeah. I don't like that. So let's fix it. Pop up close. Opacity, size, oh yeah, opacity. 0.6. Let's see if that works. Okay, let's put it to 0.5 maybe. And have it ease as well. So they have the same speed ramp in animation. Hmm. Because we have a different saturation right now. As you can tell, like the contact button is not visible after we open the pop-up. So I actually need another button to close it, which is a bit confusing in terms of interactions and workflow. So let's see. Let's actually try to create an element trigger for that X button right here. So I'm going to let's delete that and choose mouse click. 
And on the first click, I want to start a new animation, and that animation is going to be that pop-up close, right? So we have, we're changing, I'm going to delete that. We're changing the size. We're changing its opacity. I'm going to change that to 0.4. And I'm going to change the hiding to 0.5 seconds, right? So immediately after the size, 0.6, sorry. Immediately after the size is uh, down to zero, <coughs> the pop-up should go back to display none, right? Okay, I'm gonna hide the pop-up wrapper. Oops. There we go. And let's see if this is working. It opens, it closes. It doesn't open. It opens, it closes. It doesn't open. Okay, for whatever reason, I think I know why, you have to click it twice. It's because still the pop-up close is selected down here and I don't need it. So let's get rid of it. Second click, no animation. All right, let's see if this is working. Opens closes, opens, closes, opens, closes. Perfect. So I think we are done right here. Um, I guess you get the hang of it. Like you can go anywhere with this, right? So yeah, um, I don't like the fact that you can still scroll down while the um, pop-up is open. So the quick fix would probably be to make that pop-up sticky, right? So as soon as it's open, instead of putting it to absolute, I'm gonna put it to sticky. The user can still scroll, but he's not able to actually see the rest of the site, right? So he doesn't notice that he's scrolling. Um, let's see if this is working in the preview. Whoop. Yep. Beautiful. So it doesn't matter how far down we are. Can open this, close this, open, try to scroll. And then we're at the top probably almost. <laughs> so yeah. Um, the better fix would actually be to um, implement one line of custom code, which is um, set, the, set the scroll behavior in the y-axis to um, none. So if you enjoyed that video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Um, I really, I, I really hope I gave you some value here. There's a lot to learn. Um, I think this little animation is really neat and you can even go further with it, right? So we didn't even touch the text or the input fields. Um, we could also obviously animate them. Maybe the X um, instead of a static image, um, rather use a Lottie file to animate it as well. But yeah, you could um, do a lot of things. Um, I think the arm effect, like the hand down here is really nice. I do hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, see you in the next one.